Many addicts are highly spiritually sensitive people who have been assaulted in their soul by the conventional didactic education systems, didactic religious environments, and shaming and guilt-inducing people who are not addicts and deny that they have any part in the problem. As a result, the person with an addictive personality who develops an addiction is severely diminished in his or her capacity to handle normal life in the family, the workplace and the community. High percentages of addicts are raised in dysfunctional and often violent families. Their survival mechanisms become doorways to addiction. This series of videos is for recovering addicts to gain access to some tools designed to build capacity to manage feelings, to deactivate indoctrinated self-doubt, low self-esteem, reactive emotional outbursts, and a range of feelings that make the recovering addict vulnerable to even low levels of stress. Addiction thrives in those who are spiritually weakened by exposure to traumatic circumstances, particularly in childhood, such as going through war, growing up in socially and economically deprived locations, dysfunctional parenting, schooling, violence and mental illness. This series recommends a combination of good psychological therapy and spiritual education to restore the individual to their essential inner balance and resilience. Ultimately, it is up to the individual to make a decision, a firm determination to find their pure core and to rebuild their lives and their characters. Inside each of us is an invincible diamond, an inextinguishable flame and a golden heart. We have a right to that, but no one can do the work for us. We owe it to ourselves to take advantage of all the available resources and succeed. Welcome to the Golden Flame. The Golden Flame is, of course, yourself, the spiritual being that you are inside. We are looking at how can recovering addicts really move forward in their process. And first of all, we need to look at your story. Your story is your own story and the most important thing is to get that which is deep inside you to come outside on paper or on a computer screen so that you can look at it from a perspective of detachment. Writing your story or speaking your story into a recorder is very important because writing your story helps you to see from an angle of a detached observer what happened to this person called you, yourself. Writing your story means remembering as far back as you can, 
to the earliest things that you can remember that are impactful and significant. What happened to you when you arrived in this life? You were pure and perfect and you arrived into some quite crazy circumstances, maybe a lot of instability. People around you had their own issues and you were there in the midst of all of this and you had to survive. So the behaviors of people around you, the things that people said, of course, you take them in completely unfiltered because as a child, that's how you do things. And this is the reality that you know. Uh, you think that it's normal because it's going on like that. And you process your experiences in a way that's very much determined by the way the people around you also process their experience and what they say to you, um, what they do to you, how you experience that, whether it makes sense to you or not. You may find yourself getting confused or afraid Sometimes at night when you're supposed to be sleeping, you can't sleep because there are disturbances around you. Sometimes you see things or hear things that are negative and all these things go right in to your soul itself. Your mind is impacted, your heart is impacted and you do not have life experience to process it, you take it in raw, undiluted, and it impacts you sometimes in a very potent but toxic way. So writing your story is a very important way for you to uh, get it out, whatever's inside you, get it out there and look at it um, and of course it's going to reactivate a lot of the emotions that you felt at the time when these things happened. You may find that writing your story is difficult. You will say, well, I don't know where to begin. So just begin anywhere. It doesn't really matter. And it is likely that you will decide to write your story more than once because um, many different things will come into your mind. You might get it um, not in a chronological order and that doesn't matter because the way a being processes experience is a little bit like a film which is all cut in funny places and you bring the past into the future and the present and it's all mixed up and that's okay to write it like that and this story that you're writing is for you so you don't have to prove anything or defend yourself or anything like that you don't even have to write it grammatically or have any good spelling or good uh, handwriting. And you can even write it with little drawings. It doesn't have to be like you writing a novel, no. But uh, your story is a reality. It's your experience. And sometimes the things that you experience in life do not get validated by people around you who you will speak about it to. They will tell you, no, it didn't happen like that. But their angle of perception is their own. Your story is from your angle of perception. 
and you're not just observing what happens, you're feeling it, you're processing it, you're reacting to it. Sometimes you're confused. Sometimes you will remember something incorrectly. That's okay. Whether you remember it correctly or incorrectly, the important thing is how you are remembering it now, how you feel about it, what you feel about it. And the purpose of doing this exercise of writing your story is to see patterns. The things that happen to you, the things that you experience happen day to day. But the way we remember things is not in a day-to-day -day way. We remember them as a very powerful, impactful events that are stronger than the ordinary day-to-day -day things that happen, which don't leave such a powerful impression. Whatever we are experiencing, we take it personally as children, because a child is always the center of the universe. And the process of growing up is the process of shifting away from the center of the stage where everything that's happening is happening to you and it is all because of you. As you grow up, you can put yourself on the side of an event that's happening and understand very well that it is happening, but it's not happening to you. It is happening, but it's not happening because of you. So this process of psychological development, which is normal when people are not in a toxic or dysfunctional environment, gets arrested when your environment is toxic, emotionally, dramatic and traumatic. And then you continue to grow up physically, but you don't grow up emotionally and you are damaged, injured spiritually. And then your development doesn't happen in the way that it could happen. And so there are effects that last you for your whole life. So this present time, here you are sitting with yourself with the idea of writing your story. You're writing about something that happened quite a long time ago. And so you write what happened in your earliest times. And then also, as you continue to work with your story, you begin to see events and patterns that are similar to something that happened in your childhood, you begin to see patterns emerging. And the way that you relate to people is in very many instances corresponding to those patterns. And this is where you begin to detect that the patterns of behavior that you have are connected with early traumatic experiences that you had as a child, which are not your fault. It just happened, but you took it personally, you took it in and it um, created this imprint in your soul which has a tendency to replicate itself or to be activated by any circumstance or situation which resembles your traumatic experience as a child. What happens to people who go through these kinds of things, they do not tell themselves, I'm having a traumatic experience, no. This kind of analysis comes much later on. You're experiencing everything viscerally, 
it is happening to you and you are not able to look at it from any other angle of perception then it's happening to me and it's because of me, it's my fault, it means something about me. In some ways it does, but in many ways it doesn't. So the process of recovering from addiction is also a process of recovering from all those little things and big things which led to your inability to manage your feelings, to manage your interpretation of what's happening around you, to become a mature, healthy adult and graduate from the way of a child to the way of a person who is an independent, self-actualized adult who understands the difference between it's happening to me or it's just happening and I see it or I hear about it or I experience it. So the adult is able to create a distance, is able to create um, independence from what is happening around you and you will not be thrown back or catapulted back into the reaction that you had as a very young child who has no option. So writing the story is very revealing about your environment that you grew up in. You may have experiences that are traumatic in regard to your schooling, the education that you received, how they taught you, how they reacted to you, what kind of punishments were inflicted, did they understand you, did they project their prejudices and preconceptions on you, did you take that in, did you take that personally, uh, how did you feel if people made remarks about your body, your intelligence, your family, your national origin, your race, any of these things. Whenever people say something about that to you as a child, there is a charge on the words that they use. There are attitudes that go in with the words that they use and they can be very hurtful and traumatic. And all of these are like injuries to the soul, which impact your character. And they then blame you for being this way, when in fact, some of the aspects of you are responsible and some of what's happening to you is not your responsibility. Your part in it was that you took it in, you took it on, you took it personally, and you made their problem into your problem. So the process of writing the story helps you to distinguish between what you are responsible for and what you're not responsible for. And what you are responsible for, then you can take action about that. But what you're not responsible for, then that's not your problem. You don't have to do anything about it. And a little um, mantra I would give you to remember is do not suffer for someone else's negative behavior. Very often we do suffer for someone else's negative behavior because it is directed at us. But this process of writing the story adds distance between you and what happened. And as it adds distance, it gives you another perspective 
so that you can look at the behavior of another person quite dispassionately towards yourself, the young person who doesn't have the power to say to the other person, behave yourself, because a child is not supposed to have to tell an adult to behave. And if they do, they're definitely punished for it. But now you're an adult and you're looking at your little self and the limitations that were imposed on you that prevented you from standing up for yourself and defending yourself, protecting yourself at that time. So writing your story is a very good way of going back in time and being with your little self and standing beside your little self and doing what you know to do as an adult. And if you don't know what to do as an adult, but the process of doing your story, writing your story and drawing the pictures that correspond to the scenes that you lived, this also helps you to learn good ways to stand up for yourself, represent yourself, and be in your power as a well-developed, spiritually-based adult. And when I say spiritually-based, I mean that you are based in a sense of who you are that is deep, that is internal, and you know you are a being who has integrity, who has a pure heart, who is a flame, who is sensitive, and who has value and importance. And that all you want to do really is express the truth about yourself and experience give and take with other people that corresponds with who you are in your heart and soul. I'm going to suggest that you listen to this video a number of times and um, that you get yourself a nice notebook and pen or you make a new document on your computer or tablet and you call it my story and you begin to write. If you write on a computer, then you can always go back and change it. If you write on a paper, you can redo it or put little bubbles and uh, show where they fit. You can be as creative as you want with your story. It's your story. Nobody else has anything to do with it. And also, I would like you to sit with the meditation videos so that you can practice to be with yourself, to go inside, to learn to use pure thoughts, to fill your heart and soul with true, deep ideas and words and feelings that bring you closer to your essential self. So thank you very much and goodbye for now.